worship. Now listen, man, I'm so fired up that each and every one of you guys are here. Uh, my name is Jeremy, and along with my wife Jennifer, we get the opportunity and the honor of being able to pastor here. Hang on. You boy got to catch his breath. I've been running down the hall trying to seat people. It's crazy out there, y'all. We have people standing in the halls, and it's amazing. In fact, I think... I think uh, Pastor Josh probably already mentioned here at Memorial Campus, if you're on our dream team and you'd be willing to give up your seat, go ahead and stand up and walk towards the lobby so that we can uh, accommodate as many people as possible. I think we have um, three seats open right here down front, so y'all can go ahead and bring folk down. Um, and I'm so excited about what God's doing at our church. We got folks on the stage, and it's just crazy, man. I'm excited. We got people standing in the hall. If you can hear me, thank you for being here. Um, I do want everybody to know we're not just welcoming in our memorial campus. We also have a Katy campus and a Cypress campus. And God is doing amazing things at all of our campuses, additional seating. So thank you for, for being so awesome about helping us accommodate the crowds. We are working on launching another campus actually close to here um, that's going to help us bring some of the pressure off of our memorial campus. And I'm fired up about what God's doing. Have you guys... Have you guys in, enjoyed the EXO relationship series that we've been doing? Have you enjoyed that? We've had a blast. As, I was, as, as we were launching this series, I'd been praying about it, like, God, give me some direction. I want some fresh stuff to bring to this series, and I feel like I've brought you some fresh things to the series right there, right there, right there. Just sit in that one right there. Boom. Front row. Yeah, just take it. If it ain't full, sit, oh, sit right there, girl. Look at you. Brought your coffee now. Hey, I'll be an usher and a pastor. I ain't scared. That don't bother me none. But when we started this series, I said, God, I need some fresh things. I want some fresh manna to bring to the people to use a churchy word. And I feel like I did, but we also brought in um, some amazing speakers. Wasn't Bianca amazing? She was awesome, wild and crazy. My favorite line of hers was, the Bible's not boring, boo-boo, you are. Um, it was the best. And then last weekend, I thought my wife did a phenomenal job, so brave. If you haven't watched those sermons, go back on the podcast. And this weekend, dealing with a, a serious topic, I've invited a friend of mine to come in who is a powerhouse man of God, doing an amazing work of God in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'll tell you this. Let me tell you. Some of you guys already know. Let me tell you this. If they call us one of the fastest growing churches in America, then these guys are light speed. Last year, this time, their church was around 600. Today, they're over 3,000 at their church today. And the global and international influence that this man has is unparalleled. It's, it started for uh, literally eight months ago, 10 months ago, and uh, millions of, of views on YouTube because his word is sound, it's biblical, it's straightforward, it's funny, and it's powerful. Today's no different. At all campuses, I want to encourage you, if you brought your kids in here, especially those who are older elementary, middle school, high school, thank you. Keep them in here. This is going to be one of the most powerful words that they hear. Now, if it's crying babies and stuff, for the love of God, to pick them up and take them out for us if you don't mind. Thank you. That helps us. But I'm excited to hear this today. This is one of the most powerful messages you will ever hear in your life. Will you stand with me across all campuses? Put your hands together from Transformation Church, Pastor Mike Todd. Come on, Mike Todd. Bring this. Come on, Hope City. Let's give God a shout of praise in this place. Woo! Do y'all feel that? The presence of God is here. And there's an expectation in this house, and I am so excited to be here. Thank you for everybody who's making a sacrifice to be here. I want you to find somebody, high five them, and say, we talking about sex today. <laughs> ah! You ain't never done that one. You can sit down after that. You, you ain't never high five somebody and said that. You ain't never done that. Oh, I'm excited. Y'all, this is my first time preaching in Houston, and I'm at Hope City, H-Town. I'm excited about it. Hey, whoever you Instagramming, hey. Um, I, I bring you greetings from Tulsa, Oklahoma, on Transformation Church. Now, now, this is a crazy thing. I don't leave home unless I'm on assignment. Like, I have an amazing church at home, and, and, and when... I met your pastors, um, it, it was a God thing, and this is a God thing, and so before I go on or do anything else, I just want us to, to give God glory for the two amazing leaders that you guys have here, <laughs> Pastor Jennifer 
Pastor Jeremy. Oh, they're not regular people. Can we thank God for them? Amen. I met Pastor Jeremy a few months back at a, a men's conference, and I was like, I don't know who this is, but he white, he act black, and he wear cowboy boots. I love him. This is my people. And uh, I call him Uncle Jeremy, and um, he's been phenomenal. And uh, I I'm just like your young nephew, okay? So they told me that I could be uh, and act like I'm at home today. A and so I'm going to do it how I do it. Like, like, like if you don't like it, I'll leave tomorrow. <laughs> B but I want to approach a, a subject that the church is very quiet about. I I I see, some of y'all thought you was about to get out of this series without us touching your issue. <laughs> but I'm here, boo-boo. <laughs> and, 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 and we got to talk about the thing that all of us are affected by, dealing with, have dealt with, dealing with the ramifications of, have thoughts in our mind, thoughts in our heart, been abused, things have happened. And, and the church has not talked about how the biblical standard of that is supposed to affect your life. And I'm talking about sex. And, and, and at the end of the day, a, a lot of people are dealing with things, and God is over here, and anything that has to do with sex and stuff is over here, and we try to keep the two separate because um, we were introduced to it in a bad way. We, we may have had a wrong experience or been um, introduced to it um, prematurely or wrong or by the wrong people. And I just believe that the Word of God is very clear on, on, on this topic but we have to live in spirit and truth. And I know some of y'all are talking about who has given this young man the authority to talk to me about sex. What are your qualifications? Well, I want to go to the screen. This is my family. And uh, that's my wife, Natalie. That's my daughter, Isabella. She's five. She runs my life. Um, that's my son. He has a ponytail, but that is a boy. And... <laughs> <laughs> That's my daughter, Isabella, and I mean, my, my, my daughter, Ava, she's 10 months old, and she just my stunk a nunka nunka and, and uh, that's my family. I've been with my wife since we were 15 years old. That is too young to be in a relationship now that I have a daughter. And um, the only reason I showed you this is because I have some experience on the topic <laughs> that we're talking about today. Glory to God. <laughs> Why are you saying that, Pastor Mike? Because today we, we need to talk because some of you need freedom. Like, like, like in the area of sex, sexuality, impure thoughts, pure thoughts, like, like you need freedom. And I know we haven't made a space in church for you to really talk about this because then it would allow people to start judging you because you're human and you have real issues. And so you can't deal with it. And so it becomes a secret part of your life that God can use me and everything over here. But please don't touch this. Because if they really find out what I struggle with in the midnight hour, if they really find out what's on my heart or what I text somebody or whose DM I slid into, oh, don't act like you ain't slipping and sliding. Some of y'all <laughs> is out here who at the office I'm in an emotional affair with. Oh, I'm, I'm coming to your house. Because the enemy is here to try to take what God has called good and make it bad. And we have to be believers who do not shy away from the issues that people are dealing with, but step towards them and get what the Word of God says on it. So at every campus for the next 40 minutes, can we just act like the Kardashians are not our standard of relationship? And can we put the word of God, I know you got it T-bowed right now and you ready to see the next juicy thing, but could we just act like the word of God was the standard for biblical relationships and sex? And, and can we step into this thing? Because I, I saw the title of, of the message was love, sex, and marriage. And I heard people talk about love and I heard people talk about marriage, but I ain't nobody talk about sex. And when we do not step into this thing, we allow the world to define what God made. And whenever the world defines it, it will be a perverted version of what God called it to be. And if we're honest, I was raised in church. Parents loved God, could pray, prophesy, speak, do all of that other stuff. But we never talked about sex. And when we get into youth group, they had one rule. Don't have sex before you're married. That was the, uh oh, y'all went to the same church? That, that was the only instruction they gave you. That's it? Like, like that's, that's the only thing you can tell me about this? Don't do it. Well, 
What happens if you've already done it? What happens if you were introduced to something prematurely or there was abuse in your, in your childhood? What happens if you were watching a TV show and something came on that you didn't know was coming on and those images get imprinted on your head? What if you went to an uncle's house and you were using the restroom and you were looking for toilet paper under the, uh, under the cabinet and you found a magazine? Like what, ha what happens when the perversion gets in in seed form? What do you do with that? And the church is quiet. Yet half of the issues people are coming to the altar getting prayer for are sexual issues. Things that they start, you know when people need prayer but they use code words. Could you just pray for me? I'm going through some things. <laughs> there were some issues that happened late last night on a bed that I can't tell you. We not dumb! Like, like, but... But even in a moment where we're trying to get free, we can't be real. And so I came um, on assignment so that we could get free in this place today. And that we could see what God says about this. And this is the first thing I want you to understand. That sex is not bad. Amen. <laughs> that woman said, amen. Amen. She had an accent on her. Amen. Amen. Sex is not bad. And let, why are you saying that, Pastor Mike? Because it's the title of my message today. Sex was God's idea. That this was not something that some nasty little perverted person came up with in a back room and like, ah, 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 we're going to invent sex. Like, nobody, sex was God's idea. Come on, say that at every campus. Sex was God's idea. Look, some of y'all didn't even say nothing. You tight booty just sitting in your seat. You can't even, guys. But this is, this is the problem. Because it has been defined by the world, we're in church and we can't even say to, in a place that is God's, we can't even say that he is good and he created it. And until we get the power back and redeem this concept and this amazing institution uh, that God has put in place for married people, if, until we get that power back, we do not uh, allow ourselves to be able to experience the greatness and the glory of God. Sex was God's idea. Look at it. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it says, Then God blessed them. This is talking about Adam and Eve. And he said, Be fruitful and multiply. This was not an agricultural assignment. <laughs> y'all hear me? He was telling them, hey, I'm going to bless y'all. I made y'all. Y'all naked and under shame. Adam, go put it down, boy. <laughs> Do your thing, bro. Worship, worship, worship. Like he, this is what God said. Like he wanted them to connect intimately. He wanted them to procreate. He wanted them to populate it. He wanted them to connect on the deepest level. And that was through sex. And see, when you understand that this was God's idea, then scriptures like, like Mark chapter 10 verse 6 starts to make sense. But God made. Who made? Who made it? God made them male and female. That means he knows our parts, our desires, our urges, our appetites. God made them from the beginning of creation. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother to be in marriage and are joined. Everybody say joined. joined. When I begin to study this word out in the Greek and the Hebrew, it means so much more than what we think in our Western term. But check this out. This word joined means they were joined physically through the act of sex. They were joined emotionally through intimacy or closeness, and they were joined spiritually in covenant. This messed me up because what God is saying here is every time you have sex with somebody, there is a threefold cord being banded and bonded to that person. You thought it was just a one night stand. Yeah, that one time when I was in Orlando and it was my birthday and I don't know what happened. I got a little tipsy and then he was there and then it just happened, but it didn't mean nothing. Yes, it did. What you don't know is that you connected to that person, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. And what happens is you get these things called soul ties. And these soul ties are things that tie you to other people. Some of y'all right now are sitting in that chair and it's about to break because you're tied to so many people. You're sitting there. Don't point at nobody. Don't you? Don't you do it. But so many of us are trying to figure out why when we try to go forward, there's something pulling us back. 
You had an interaction, a sexual interaction with that person that was full of rage, and you never were angry before, but somehow now you just go off on people? It's because there was an emotional transfer. This thing is, oh, y'all hear me. This thing is bigger than a feeling of pleasure. This thing was meant to connect two people into one. So my, so my question is, how many people are you connected to today? How many things have we allowed to become a tie that holds us back from our destiny and what God has for us? And this is the thing, the rest of that verse goes on to say, and the two are united into one, since they are no longer two, but one. I love how God says things because we're remedial, and we'd be like, what do you mean, God, two? Like, you, you mean the two become one? He says, and yes, you are united from two into one. Let no one split apart what God has joined together. See, God meant for our joy joining the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual to happen with one person so that we could be connected to that person in the most intimate way. You know the crazy thing about it, as I studied marriage in the Bible, the dress and the groomsmen and all the pictures and all that stuff, God don't get glory from that. I mean, you were bridezilla and, and all of the struggles and we pay out all the money, but God doesn't get glory from that. Do you know back in the day when God recognized a marriage is when the husband and the wife consummated the marriage. They came together and they had sex. If I had time to go on and tell you about how there was a blood covenant and how things were shed and how all of that meant it, it was a sign of being together, I could go through all of that. But, but what it means is this is when God recognized that you were married. The crazy thing about it is every time you have sex outside of marriage, you're marrying the person without the covenant. Oh, you didn't know. You, you didn't know that, that you were saying I do and you really didn't. And that's why the culture has desensitized this thing to a release or a, a, a pleasure that, that, that we use. to. No, 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 no. What you're doing is you're taking pieces of you and you're giving them to people. When something is meant to come together and be joined forever and then you rip it apart, it never leaves with what it came with. It takes a piece of you with it. And my question is, how many pieces of you are spread out and robbing you from purpose? You used to be so secure in who God called you to be, and then you got into a sexual relationship with somebody, and you just now, you don't even believe in yourself. It's because they took a piece of you. Oh, I'm in your, I'm in your mailbox. <laughs> here, here, why, why are you saying this, Pastor Mike? Because most of us were never taught. We never knew that this whole thing with sex was like, why is God keeping this for me? I'm, I remember praying this prayer. If God didn't want me to feel this, why wouldn't he just keep this away from me until I was married? <laughs> because the greatest thing God gave you is choice. And it can't be love if you can't choose it. And you can't choose God to help you in this area of purity if you don't make the decision. And so today at Hope City, I want us to reclaim this thing and realize that sex is good, but brings me to my, my, my second point is sex has been perverted. And until we realize this, we get in a place where, where we don't really see how God wants this to happen in our life. And this is not the first time this has, been, this has happened. See, because we don't deal with the truth. Like the truth is, I want everybody to understand this, 80% of adolescents find out about sex through entertainment, media, and through their friends. This is what the health journal says. Do you know that means 80% of people are not finding out about sex through teachers, through educators, and through people who know the word of God? It tell, the statistics tell us that 50% of all high school students, 17 and under, by the time they graduate high school, they will have a sexual encounter, 50%. The sad fact is, it's 72% 72 for African Americans. Seven out of 10 African Americans will have a sexual experience before they leave high school. It's 52% for Hispanics. And it's 47% for white people. Yay, white people. <laughs> All I'm saying is it's an epidemic. And if we, don't, if we don't consult the word of God and teach our kids and teach ourselves 
what God says about this, then we stay in a cycle of darkness that the enemy is able to pass down from generation to generation. And a lot of your issues right now that you're dealing with is because nobody stood up and handled it. But I believe at Hope City today, there's some people who are going to say, God, I need you in this area of my life. Look how soft them claps are like, oh, I don't even want them to know. The crazy thing is you can trick me and you can trick the person sitting next to you, but you got to go home and deal with it. And so I would rather us be real because God doesn't bless who you pretend to be. He blesses who you really are. And so if we realize this thing with sex has been perverted and this is not a new thing, then we can go to the word and study it. Paul was dealing with this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I want you to turn there. And he was dealing with the people in Corinth who are kind of like us today at Hope City, at all the campuses that are, are, are literally trying to figure out how to live saved, how to live pure lives. But there's so much temptation around. I mean, you can't scroll on Instagram without seeing somebody half naked. Somebody. For the, all the older people, Facebook. You, you, you can't scroll. You, you, you work at places where people are intentionally putting out, God, how do I live safe? How do I stay faithful to this marriage? How do I not slip up and go into these things with all of this temptation around? And these people in Corinth were dealing with this same issue, and Paul says something about it. And, and, and I want you to get the idea because if you don't get God's picture of one, this doesn't make sense. Like, like, let me tell you God's plan of one real quick. Write this down. This is going to help you. God's plan of one was one God, one man, one woman, one marriage, one sex partner, one flesh, one lifetime, one picture. He's trying to make in us the reflection of how the church and Jesus Christ are supposed to look. Every marriage is supposed to look like that. It's a picture. It's a copy of it. And he wants that picture on the earth. But what we have done is settled for cheap counterfeits. Duplicates at poor quality. And what God is asking us, could I give you the original? Could I show through your life what it looks like to take somebody who submits their sexuality to me and I can allow them to be a picture that their community can see, that their brothers and sisters can see, that their cousins and family members and coworkers can see? God needs somebody to do this, but it's hard. I'm not going to sit up here and act like this is a magic trick and a, a prayer and when you're not lonely and you want to be able to satisfy your urge or you're married. You know the biggest trick is that all of those things go away when you get married. That's a lie. Your eyes still work once you marry. All these different things happen because we haven't dealt with the root issue. So, so Paul, help us. Help us, Paul. Like, give us some, some tips. Okay, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not, everybody say will not. will not, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. I like this part. Don't fool yourself. Like Paul's telling these people, don't fool yourself. You cannot get everything God has for you in your life and go after purpose the same way and you keep this area of sex off limits to God. Don't fool yourself that you can be used by God and see masses come to save and just walk in your purpose. And I don't know why we do that when we're really trying to go after God. But walk in your purpose. And you can do all of that, but still keep God out of the thoughts that you have in your mind. And Pastor Mike, you, you don't really understand. Like, I'm not really doing anything, but you're thinking it. And there's an area in your heart that is so empty that you keep filling it with shows and pictures and images of things that are going against the thing you don't want in your life. But it cra the craving calls your flesh to a place where you're watching stuff where people sleeping with people and it's the office and this and that and power. I want to watch power, Lord. I just need power. No, you need some real power. You need to get the power of God on the inside of you to help you withstand the urges and the desires that are going on in your life. And I know, I know. Because some of y'all so stiff-necked right now, you haven't moved the whole service. <laughs> you, you haven't. Because what the enemy can keep in the dark, he can keep chained around you. He don't care if you get to another level and you raise up and go to a place. He's just waiting because he knows there's an area that's still in the dark. 
And if you ain't told nobody, that's why it's so important that you get in these freedom groups. That's why it's so important that you begin to become clean. Do you know the difference between honesty and transparency? Uh, honesty is telling the truth when somebody asks. But do you know that most people won't ask you the questions you need to be actually truthful about? And so you'd be like, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. But you ain't being transparent. Transparency is offering it up. Transparency is saying, this is what I struggled with last night. Transparency is saying, I took his number and I've been sexting him and I need a new phone. No, no, no. But see, the enemy keeps us trapped because we'll be honest, but we won't be transparent. And that thing that has been perverted in our hearts and our mind, we got to come clean with it. And these guys, he's talking to all of these people, and they're like, okay, so those who, you know, do wrong won't inherit the kingdom of God. Paul, could you please define for us? Because we, we don't really know what's wrong. Like, what's wrong? And don't that sound like us? We always on the line, like, is this sin? Is this sin? I mean, is the oral? Is the masturbation? Is, like, Lord, what is it? And he said, let me be very clear on it. Look what it says. He said, those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people. I like that one because some of y'all was prideful and was like, that ain't me, pastor. That ain't me, pastor. That ain't me, pastor. And then it said greedy. And you was like, because you selfish. You won't even share your fries, greedy butt. Um, those who are drunkards and those who are abusive and those who cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. What are you trying to say, Pastor Mike? God cannot use you to the fullest ability that he wants to and provide for you in the way if you don't allow him into those areas of your sexual thoughts, your sexual abuse, your sexual ideas, and your sex life. Pastor Mike, I've never heard this in a series. That's why you're struggling so hard. Because you have not allowed the power of God to come in. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that wants to come into your situation. But he can't force him way, his way in. You have to let. Everybody say let. let. You got to let him in. And see, that's the crazy thing about it. Most of us want God to come in and be the SWAT team to our life. But the Bible says he stands at the door and, hey, it's me. It's about 1130. And I know this is the time the cycle starts. And Reggie texts you. <laughs> if your name is Reggie, this is not about you. But maybe it is. <laughs> hey, turn your phone off. Holy Spirit, but what if something? Turn your phone off. I'm standing at the door. And I'm, not, I'm trying to save you from that thing that's going to cause it. What we want God to do is, boom, it is me, the Holy One of Israel. I am here to heal, deliver, purify, sanctify. He's not about to do that because the greatest thing he gave you was choice. And if you don't choose to invite him in, he stands on the sideline. Do you know the crazy thing about that? He's there the whole time. And you tie his hands. When you're texting, he's watching. When you lay down in the bed, he's there weeping because another piece of your purpose is being tied to somebody who doesn't even care about you. Pastor Mike, you going hard today. Why are you going so hard? I mean, this is a lot. It's because I'm passionate about this because this was my life. Like, I almost got taken out by this thing of sexual perversion. I almost, I literally almost, you wouldn't know Pastor Michael Todd, I wouldn't be at Hope City today if I wouldn't have surrendered my sexuality. I was jacked up all in my mind, in my head, on all kinds of things, images I saw, things that happened to me, things I did to other people, and the enemy, he didn't care that I was on stages playing drums and worshiping and showing up for youth group and serving the homeless. He knew he had a hold on me. And nobody in my youth group was talking about it. The leaders weren't talking about it because they was dealing with it. Oh, I'm sorry. I got passionate right there. That. <laughs> and it's hard to talk about something that you've never dealt with. And so these men are trying to figure it out. 
And they're like, okay, Paul, like, okay, so if we do those things, we can't inherit the kingdom of God. And then Paul throws in the grace of God. And he says, I want you not to forget, verse 11, some of you were once like that. But you were cleansed, and you were made holy, and you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Can we take a five-minute praise break and thank God for his grace?